Okay, so I'm excited to share with you this video on how to find vertical and horizontal asymptotes. This is part of a series of videos that I'm doing on rational functions. The first video that I did was basically just an overview to talk about what is an asymptote, what's a vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, what's the end behavior of the graph, local behavior. I also have done another video separately on just how to find horizontal asymptotes. So in this video, we're going to kind of put it all together. So I'm going to give you a four step plan to success. Step one is that you need to factor both the numerator and the denominator. So in the example that we're working with, we have f of x equals x squared minus one over x squared minus two x minus three. The numerator is the difference of two squares. So this factors out as x plus one x minus one. The denominator, notice that what's going to multiply to give me negative three, that's going to add to give me negative two. Well, that's going to have to be x minus three times x plus one because negative three times one is equal to negative three, but negative three plus one is equal to negative two. So I've gone ahead and I've done step one, which is to factor out the problem. Step two in our four step plan to success is going to be to look for holes. A hole is a removable point of discontinuity. The way you recognize a hole is if you can cancel a like factor top to bottom. Here, top to bottom, I have an x plus 1. That means that I am going to have a hole when that factor, x plus 1, is equal to 0, which is basically at x is equal to negative 1. And then, because I've eliminated those factors, one from the top, one from the bottom, I'm left with x minus 1 over x minus 3. So now I'm ready for step 3. Once I have factored, I've looked for holes, then I'm going to go ahead and continue by finding the vertical asymptote. And the way you're going to find vertical asymptotes is that you're going to set the denominator equal to zero. So if I take a look at what I have, I have X minus three is my denominator. If X minus three is set equal to zero, that means that X is equal to three is going to be my vertical asymptote. Finally, in my four step plan to success, I'm going to look for horizontal asymptotes. And to find the horizontal asymptote, I have to play the comparison game where I'm going to compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. By degree, we're talking about the largest power. And like I said, I have a whole video on this. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at what I have, which is X minus one over X minus three. The degree of the numerator is one. The de degree of the denominator is one. So that means that they are exactly the same. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals the leading coefficients, which are the numbers in front. And since they don't have any, it's just one over one. So y equals one is going to be the horizontal asymptote. I could have also determined the horizontal asymptote by looking at the original function, which is right here before I even identified holes. Notice the degree of the numerator is two. The degree of the denominator is two. They are exactly the same when they are exactly the same then y equals the leading coefficients, y equals one, which is exactly what I got in my answer. So this means that this particular graph has a hole when x is equal to negative one. And just in case you want to determine what is the y coordinate of that hole, all you have to do is substitute that value into the equation you have left. So if I say negative one minus one over negative one minus three, I get negative two over negative four, which is positive one half. That means that the ordered pair for my whole is the point negative one comma one half. So in this particular case, I've been able to identify a vertical asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, and the whole that the graph has. Okay, so now our job is to go ahead and graph this function with all the information that we have gathered so far. So remember the first step was that we factored. When we factor, we identified that we do have in fact like factor. So what I'm graphing is really X minus one over X minus three. This graph has a vertical asymptote at X equals three, a horizontal asymptote at Y equals one and a hole at negative one comma one half. So I'm going to go ahead and create my coordinate plane. I'm going to label my axes X and Y. Then I'm going to go ahead and just count one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to go ahead and put my asymptotes. So there's an asymptote at X equals three. 
there's an asymptote at y equals one. And the whole we're gonna hold on to for a second. I can put it right now, it's at negative one and one half, but I can also wait a little bit for it. So it's kind of a personal choice. What's gonna happen with my graph? This graph, remember the asymptotes attract the graph towards it, but the graph is not going to cross or touch those asymptotes. So my graph is gonna behave something like this on the right hand side of that vertical asymptote, either above or below and what I need to figure out is which one is it is it above that horizontal asymptote or is it below then on the left hand side it's going to do the same thing either this way or this way somehow so what we're going to do in order for us to graph is that we're going to choose value of x around the vertical asymptote and right now we're lucky because we only have one vertical asymptote Sometimes we have two or more vertical asymptotes, and so we have to do this in sections. So I'm going to create a quick table of values where if my vertical asymptote is at x is equal to 3, I'm going to pick numbers to the right and to the left. So I'm not going to pick three numbers to the right and to the left. To the right, I can pick 4 and 5, and to the left, I can pick 1 and 2, or 2 and 1. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to substitute them into this equation right here. So if x is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, and 4 minus 3 is 1, 3 over 1 is 3. So at 4, I'm at positive 3, 2, 3. That's enough, honestly, to tell me that the graph is going to open up this way. But the more points you get, the better looking graph you're going to end up with. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute 5. If I get 5 minus 1, I get 4. 5 minus 3 is 2. 4 over 2 is 2. So at 5, I'm at positive 2. And sure enough, this is what's happening with my graph. It's turning, getting closer to those asymptotes. Let's see what happens on the left-hand side. If I substitute 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but 0 divided by any number is 0. So at 1, I'm at 0, which is awesome because I was able to find the x-intercept. Then I'm going to substitute 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So that gives me 1 divided by negative 1, which is negative 1. So at 2, I'm at negative 1. So then here is going to be my other part of the graph. And I can make that longer if I want to. One of the things that now we have to remember is that we do in fact have a whole and the whole occurs at the point negative one comma one half. So right here, I want to make sure that in my graph, I can tell that there is a removable point of this continuity. So my graph is continuous, but there is a hole in the graph. This right here is a much better and more accurate picture of what your graph looks like. Remember that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals three and we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. And so the way we were able to determine which way the graph opened was basically by just creating a table of values and checking out x values to see what points I have on these graphs. And then at the end, I made sure that I have my whole identified on my graph. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.